Welcome to another episode of The Next Big Rush, and I am here again with Dev of Fission 3.0, and we are talking about a really, really exciting piece of news that they've just put out recently um, about uh, a discovery hall that they've had. Dev, welcome to the show once again. Uh, Thank can you. you. Please tell us a little bit more about this piece of news. I remember that when we first talked uh, we were telling our viewers that, you know, the, the machine readings were literally off scale um, and that we really expected right. this thing to be extremely high grade. When I read the news, almost spit my coffee out because um, it was something above 59% uranium, which is to me unfathomable. I can't even really picture yeah. what the core looks like. Uh, tell us about this piece of news, please. Sure. Uh, first of all, Merry Christmas to everybody. I, Merry Christmas. I had a vision of three point two shareholders had a, a better Christmas than other shareholders in uranium stocks. So I'm grateful for that. Um, yeah. Um, what we did is we put out the assays on our discovery hole. Um, assays um, are different than scintillometer readings in that the company is taking the scintillometer readings. So it's in house. Mm -hmm. Whereas the assays are independent, um, there's very strict rules, how the cores handle, how it's split, how two people have to do this. There. A lot of these rules are obviously put in place after Briex. So companies no longer can say, we've got 20 million ounces, it's gotta be an independent body. So the assays were done by independent and they're done by a reputable lab. And then, so what it showed was confirmed that our discovery hole was, was fabulous, lack of a better word, not technical. But what it showed and we looked at it was, you know, about six, 7% um, over 15 meters. And, um, and in that there was a chunk of uh, a, me you know, a meter, which is like that, um, you know, uh, very high grade 60% stuff, um, uranium. So it confirmed what we thought that when you get over 65,000 counts per second, you're gonna have over 50%. Well, we were over 50%. And that was the key for me. Cause I, I, I you know, we told everybody it'd be 10 to 20% to lower expectations. Um, so what it confirmed is it's, it's a discovery. You know, um, David Talbot in the past used to say he needed assays before you call it a discovery. Um, but then we put up those three other uh, follow-up polls um, that hit. Um, that, uh, you know, that he felt by then it was a discovery. Now we can officially say it's a discovery because the third party has put out assays. Brilliant. Good stuff. And so when we are faced with um, numbers like that, albeit, you know, a short interval of extremely high grade, but you still have very, very high grade within 15 meters. So it's still an incredible hole. Uh, what is the expectation going forward? I mean, where where are we in, in this sort of discovery process where we go from sure. not having any idea of what we hold sure. to actually right. being able to mine it? Where are we in that cycle? Sure. Well, you well, the steps are you're going to drill a lot, maybe 100 holes. You'll put a PA uh, preview you know, and see how many pounds you got. You do another one, then you move to feasibility and bank of feasibility. The, the next step would be over the next couple of years, uh, maybe a year is put a PA saying, we estimate this as many pounds. And then you go towards uh, environmental permitting and baseline work has already started. By that time you say, okay, you know, we think um, we have so many pounds. Then after that, I guess that's the PA. And then you start working towards the bankable feasibility, which is where companies like NextGen and Triple uh, RR with Vision Uranium. So the steps between now, first of all, it's we're miles away. Um, we've got a first, um, we know what, you know, we say is we know what we don't, don't know, or we don't know how big this is. And, you know, we don't know any of that. All we know is we got one hole. We got three more whole assays coming. That will tell us something. But I don't believe until in talking to Ray, till we get halfway through our drilling winter program, we will really understand the geometry, um, okay. which way it's headed. You know, we know it's at 45 degrees, right? That we know we've gone we're going to go more up um, towards the sandstone and then we're going to go down below so idea is to keep going this way then step out um, the same methodology that we used at triple r 
same methodology at the JZone. We are going to figure out where is it going, what's the geometry, and etc. So, the really um, between now, I would say we'll have a better idea after our the next ninety days. Um, the main thing is, uh, I think yeah, I sent you that chart. You know, when you for investors, what really matters is flow of information. Um, look, I, I believe that setting for uranium is the perfect storm. You know, last year we saw you know, rich uranium shoot up 300%. Now, it'll take time for that to show up in the, in the yellow cake. Um, the good news is in the U.S., they've now given contracts out at $60 because they know that's what the minimum need to produce mm -hmm. in uranium. Mm -hmm. So um, investors have to see that we're just starting out. You've only done one hole. You got a hundred holes coming, and if you look at um, you look at next gen and you know ISO, the two latest ones had discoveries. You know you can see them do this and zip, and then we're still in that. I still think we're in that honeymoon stage of uh, of excitement where it's going to go because we don't know. Um, I think we ask ourselves in ninety days from now, you have a better idea. Is it you know is it more like an arrow this way or is it flat like triple R? Who knows? But the good news for uranium investors is it's a stock you have to own, in my opinion, if you like uranium. Because, look, Cameco, the other developers, those kinds of companies, uh, the physical, all based on the spot price of uranium. That's it. Nothing else. They don't have any um, X factor. They don't have a growth, something going on right now that can double the stock. Cameco is not doubling. Love Tim and the guy, but it's not doubling unless uranium prices go up. Um, but I love Lee and Ross. Those stocks are not doubling. We have a chance to double if this continues to grow. So, you know, I've always said in your portfolio, you want a, a big company, a uh, Mercedes industry, like a chemical, a, a spot or a yellow cake and a developer, but you go, you got to own an expiration. Um, and I think, I think we are worthy of that. Um, we certainly have enough money now. Um, we've always had the best people, in my opinion. And I'm, I've, been, I've been jumping up and down on the pulpit about this for a long time. I've never understood why people own exploration stock with a company with somebody who's never found uranium. I've never, it just blew my mind. I guess they're better salesmen than me. Um, but so we've always had the best people. Now we have lots of money. We raised the 8 million of 42 cents charity flow through. Um, now, having a project like this, like this could be, let's look, let's be pessimistic and say this could be the worst, this could be the worst case scenario, just the best hole we ever get, okay? After this, it's downhill. We can look at that way. Or other people will say, holy crap, maybe it blows up in the sandstone. Maybe it goes all the way down. Because we do have smoke well, about 800 meters away down south. And I saw it last year when we did the fort. We think gave us reason to be near the A1. We hit that hole. So the best case scenario is it's very big, but we don't know. Again, halfway through our drilling program there. But to me, um, you know, people, you know, thinking that's all the stock's going to do is a bit naive. Um, I think there's a ton more upside, but all depends on the drilling. But if you like uranium, you need to own it because. Um, Discovery whole, the companies are entirely different. You know, we were looking at the chart and I, I, I see the Twitter stuff. Yes, but there comes a point where the fundamentals will oversee the trading, right? Absolutely. Um, and that's where I think we are. Um, the company, as I say, you see me on Twitter, I sleep well at night knowing it's the best discovery hole in decades. Um, someone needs to show me one. Somebody out there in the online world Show me a discovery hole as good as this one. I'm, you know, I, I know it's one of the best ever. Um, and we're off to a good start. Lots of uh, excitement moving ahead. You got assays coming up for three fall. We had four that, holes. That was, my next, that was my next yeah. question. So how many <coughs> assays are we waiting on right now? We had four holes we put in. Uh, one hole, we tried to put an angle hole in and it hit something and it went off. By the time we got to our target, it was 40 meters away. So 
Uh, you see the hole miss. We didn't miss. The hole did. <laughs> it's just drilling is very tough up there. We're using sonic drilling, and it's different than what we've had before. But those other three have hit. Um, so we've got assays coming from those holes. But more importantly, in talking to Ray, you know, we should be out there with a sonic drill around January 4th. Um, that early. So that goes in, yeah, right away. Um, we we um, want to give everybody time off because once people are out there, they're working you know, 24 hour shifts. So we're all going. And so give them a nice uh, break. Um, and uh, like I said, if we don't, they're going to call it the Grinch deposit. Um, so we want to be fair to our staff. So um, yeah, so we had assays coming on those three follow up holes that did hit um, high counts per second. Um, and then we start right away. So I figure what you'll see is uh, we'll start to drill. And those other assays will start to come in. And every time we hit a hole, we'll keep on going. So I think the next 90 days, super exciting, lots of news. Um, even after that, every time we hit high grade with a scintillometer, we'll announce it. Um, a year from now, we may not be doing that because we have a, a large deposit and that doesn't matter. It's not material anymore. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's quite material. Every step out hole we do is very material to the company um so yeah so I, that's the big obviously that's the we start to drill the assays will start to come in for the other holes and we'll send more and more in thankfully um not a lot of people were drilling in uh november sorry in december so that we could uh get these assays back right away get them faster cool so you already had some money in the bank when you did the last raise for i believe eight million um right. how much of a runway does that give you and obviously i i don't want to yeah. make you swear uh by your mother that oh, you no. won't raise any money because i think that that's a little <coughs> yeah. game for both shareholders yeah. and for, oh, for management sure. uh, you know, but what's your expectation well i mean we've got this money will get us through the drilling the winter and obviously if we start hitting big holes the stock will go up, um, hopefully for decent markets. Um, we'll raise more money for, you know, we'll take it probably uh, May or June. If it gets too wet in there, we won't drill. Then we'll raise a lot more money for this, uh, the summer drilling. Um, it's all driven by results. and But the old saying is you take money when you can, not when you have to. Uh, you get better terms. And you get more competition for the dollar amongst the, the, the banks. So we will raise money, but it's all subject to drill results um, and market conditions. You know, right now we've got about 15 million. Um, we thankfully, you know, had some money come in, a uh, million dollars um, from warrants. Um, so that helps. Um, but yeah, we're still pretty lean. You know, we're going to say it that way. But uh, we have certainly enough money for all the way through the summer, you know, but I don't, I don't, when you have the kind of results we've been getting, I don't believe money, raising money will be an issue. What price you do it at and what terms you have, that kind of thing are always open to it. But last time, you know, we were able to get a, a charity flow through at a you know, pretty massive premium, uh, you know, and no warrant. There's no warrant on the last one. Um, I like that because when you, we both know when we have a share and a warrant, it's much easier to sell the share because you're afraid, you know, because you got the warrant as stock goes up. Mm -hmm. Well, that that wasn't there. So we're hopefully we'll do another financing without a warrant. Brilliant. And I can only imagine that with such a discovery, if we're able to prove up that we actually have a large enough deposit of uranium here, I can only imagine that um, U.S. investors and international investors would be more um, interested in investing in the company. Do you have any plans of, you know, coming to the U.S. market? I, I say coming, yeah. I'm not from the U.S., but <laughs> do, you, do you imagine sure. being available yeah, you know, there? We've looked at, um, you know, I've looked at both uh, the U.K. and um, the U.S. Right now, there's no uranium stock in London. Right. And right. I think there's only a yellow cake, which is that's not a yeah, yellow cake, which is not a, yeah. it's not a uranium company. It's a physical it's a holder. So um, and Nikki Grant is on our board and, you know, um, she's certainly saying, hey, let's look at it. And I said, yeah. And then we got our friends in the South who have a hard time buying it. My, some of my personal friends have a, just a battle with their broker to buy the stock. You know, you have to have, they have to fill out these forms, blah, blah, blah. And they're going, what? and let's face it, people see over the counter, they go, 
what? Um, so they certainly we've given consideration to um, the rules allow you to roll 10 for one, uh, but I believe you've got to tie it to an event. So it doesn't make any sense unless we say, okay, we're listing, you know, listing in the US or listing in the UK. Um, you know, so I, again, all good decisions are based on good input. And that's my uh, goal this week actually is to reach out to a few bankers and get their input and saying, I've talked to one in the US um, and I'll talk to others at Sprott, um, at Haywood and others. Um, and obviously our main banker is uh, Bruce and uh, Dave, our analyst, talk to them. Um, but I believe that um, we need to do that sooner or later. Um, I just, if you got a world-class discovery at $3, it looks different than at 30 cents. Um, you know, again, I think we talked about it before that, you know, Australians and Hong Kong people love these five cent cent socks that go up a little bit. They love that, you know, um, in the States, what good thing comes under $2, right? Kind of thing. So, um, so it's always trying to figure who's your audience and you know, where you want to go. But to me, I do believe there's a reason why stocks like Next Gen um, and Tennyson often outperformed Fission Uranium when I was the CEO because we weren't listed there. Um, unfortunately, I listened to some directors back then that didn't know crap and um, I trusted them and that was stupid of me. Um, but, um, you know, uh, we should have listed in a long time ago and we're going to make sure if it's the right thing now, we will. Good. Uh, one thing that I have learned uh, almost painfully in my investing uh, career, I guess you could say, is that um, stocks or companies who are um, overvalued tend to remain overvalued <laughs> for if they have, you know, their basics, right? If they have a good team, um, yeah. if they had good backing, good investors and good properties, then guess what? They're not going to be super, super cheap ever. Uh, right, Dev, thank you so much for coming in and explaining to us a little thank bit you. of the plan. Um, any last words of advice uh, for your fellow uranium investors going into 2023? Um, just be patient. Um, you know, today uh, in a bad market, people are driven by fear. They all mm -hmm. were, until so they tend to want to trade a stock and they're all scared, saying, this is a discovery stock. Be patient. Um, you know, it's going to have its ups and downs. But if, if there's any kind of size there, the stock will, I think, be much higher. Um, just encourage people not to get too caught up with the small things. And one of, look, um, you know, you, you got to have least, in my view, you know, ask me, I can answer intelligently, and so can Ray, what do we have halfway through our drill program this winter? You know, the reality with this stuff is it's, 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 it's like high pocket gold. You can be here, miss it here. So you really got to mm -hmm. understand it and know that you've got a guy like Ray Ashley and his team together that have done this twice before. They're not going to fumble the ball. You know, they're going to get it done. They're going to grow this into a deposit. If the deposit, if the geology is there, it'll become a deposit. It will not be missed. So if it's but there, he'll find it. He'll find he it because that's why <laughs> that's the purpose of giving $8 million that we can now mm -hmm. do that. So just be comforted. I am, you know, I'm one of the largest shareholders and I, you know, I sleep well knowing Ray and the team, um, you know, there'll be shifts along the way, but overall they know what to look for. Remember, this is unique in that triple tr R um, was in the basement. The J zone was at the unconformity, right? Right now, we don't know where it goes. We think mm. it might go in the basement. It might go up into the sandstone, might blow up there, which would be amazing because, you know, pretty high grades in there. Um, or it goes down either way, or it's both. That would be the ultimate to have a deposit. And that's basement that also goes up. We don't know. Mm -hmm. And again, I ask investors to be patient till we get halfway through our drilling winter program. Then you really know. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Dev. I hope to catch up with you soon. You got it. Thank you.